I meant you repeat, Yona. My goodness. Okay. application. I know a lot of people we've talked to, a lot of these pre-medical students we've talked to requested this video, so we are excited to share this video with you guys today. I know we haven't been posting lately and we've been lagging behind again, but as the school year goes on, it gets tougher. We just finished finals yesterday, so finally. We're, yeah, we're finally. So we're kind of we're kind of exhausted, but we're getting ourselves we're getting our bearings back together and so we're just really excited to start sharing post with you guys again and sharing more information regarding podiatry. So we have a whiteboard here today with some of the things we wrote down that were particularly important and also just general requirements that we saw from the AACPM.org website. And so this website stands for American Association of Colleges, Colleges of Podiatric Medicine. So in order to start, it, start off, that's where you want to go. This is the website you want to go and then from there you want to go to the admissions tab, click there, and then you will get a brief overview of the general requirements seen, uh, seen throughout all these podiatric medical colleges that are required. Um, um, just to add on before you continue, um, this is also a very good resource to learn about podiatry uh, if you're interested yeah. in just learning more. If that's something you haven't even heard of and you're watching your video. Yeah, exactly. Like Diksha said, like definitely look at the website. It's not only just about applying to podiatry schools. It's also there is a vast amount of information there that you should also look at and read about if you're also considering going into podiatric medicine. So once you're there, you go to the admissions tab, like we said, and then you're going to get a brief overview, some general requirements. And if you need to apply to get to the online application, there's a separate tab within that page that says apply online. We're not going to walk you through uh, that application of applying online. We're just going to talk about, again, general overview and things that you should keep in mind when applying. So to start off, we have some general school requirements here. So we just have your basic sciences. We have biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and English. On the website, you're going to see the, uh, the semester units that are required for each of these subjects. However, be aware that on the website it has the minimum requirements for those classes. So some of the schools that you might be looking into might have different requirements for some of these subjects. So go to the school's website, go to their admissions tab and admissions requirements and see if you need certain, if you need more semester units for some of these classes. I know for me when I was applying to my school, English what there was an additional two semester units of English. So I had to take an additional English class in order to fulfill that requirement. So be aware of that because if, for your college, you might be fulfilling all the requirements for your major, but you're not fulfilling all the requirements that are required for the school of your choice. So be aware of that. Also, for the science classes, each science class you must take a lab with it. I stress this out because some people I have talked to take in science classes but did not take the lab with them. So do not, do, just look at your transcript or look at your schedule and make sure there's a lab that is associated with these science classes and please be sure to take those. That is something you should always take and that's something we're just going to stress out right now because I don't want you guys to forget that as you're applying to uh, podiatry schools. There's also, um, when you go on the application, there is a starter guide or um, help tab that you can click on and it will have different conversions for all the courses. Um, so in case you're like me or I don't know, was your, were you on quarter system? Yeah, I was on quarter system. Okay, so we were both on quarter system and a lot of graduate programs like podiatry ask for everything in semester credits, credit hours. Um, so if you need to help with converting that, I'm sure you could find that on that website, but also it's on the application. That's a very good point. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I was on quarter, I was on quarter system, so that conversion was kind of weird for me, and I'm glad yeah. you brought that up, Diksha. Yeah. Um, another requirement, 
is recommendations. Um, I know the standard, there was, when I was going to college during my time, the, the standard way was getting it written from a teacher. But now, nowadays, it's through a website called like Interfolio or Virtual Eval, where these are certain websites where you can organize all of your recommendations into one website for, a, I think it's a small fee per year or for three years. And the website is really, these websites are really great because you can send a link to the professor that you want to write a record, that you want a recommendation from, and they just open up that link and they fill up fill out that link with their recommendation. And I think you can set up a template for them for that recommendation. So it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty awesome feature. So definitely check those out. And if you haven't checked those out, I would highly recommend you to go at least uh, invest some money into that because as you're going through your college career and you are meeting professors and you're doing really well in classes, I, I hope, and you're really making good connections with teachers, you should ask if they can write your recommendation and it never hurts. Always ask and be sure that you're always gonna be on top of it because these websites do help organize all of that and it never hurts to have more than two or three recommendations. And if you do, honestly, if you do ask for a recommendation letter, make sure it's from someone who can, who can write a lot more than the basic template uh, about you. you. You don't want it to just say, oh, he or she is hardworking and is inquisitive and just leave it at that. It needs to be someone who knows you very well and can explain something about you that your application may not be able to express or um, just something that makes you unique. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so some of the recommendations that you need or you should have, um, depending on the school that you're looking into, is a teacher recommendation, a pre-health advisor recommendation or a slash committee. Um, I don't know how that works. Uh, I would talk to an advisor about that or your school about that because I never got that. And some schools require you to have a recommendation from a podiatrist, which is really important in my opinion um, because exactly. shadowing, uh, getting a recommendation from a podiatrist just shows how dedicated you are into exploring the field and getting to recognize more about the field and it shows your interest and, and interest and passion about it so even if your school the school that you're looking into doesn't require you to get a podiatrist uh podiatry, podiatry recommendation i highly recommend you to get a podiatry uh, recommendation because that will only uh separate you from other students who didn't get that recommendation it will make your you look really good when you're applying to po uh, podiatric schools. Exactly. So, do you want to talk about immediate action? Yeah, so okay. stuff that I want you all to make sure you get in immediately is uh, basically right when you open your application, I want you to have your MCAT scores ready, your transcripts ready, your recommendation letters ready. And obviously, uh, your personal statement should probably be ready by that time too because um, I don't have that up, but just to quickly talk about the personal statement, it is literally asking why, not just why medicine, but why podiatric medicine. So have that ready and go through different drafts, not just one draft. Um, I want you to ask someone that you trust, maybe one or two people. You don't want to overdo it because it can be overwhelming. Everyone has their own opinions on it. Um, so make sure whatever you do, you with your letter of recommendation or, and your transcript and your MCAT scores, get that immediately, personal statement, have that ready as well. So the reason I'm saying, um, for the reason I'm talking about the transcripts, because the problem with this is when you send those in and you input the scores in, these take a while to get verified. Mm -hmm. um, they take about two weeks minimum I feel like um, my problem when I applied last year was I applied in May so something that I suggest as I talked about no one should do um, but I really considered podiatry very late and I didn't want to wait any longer so I just went for it um, but I got I just consider myself lucky it's not something I suggest you do but since I got it verified very late I in the process I almost almost had a null application basically um, it wouldn't have been 
accepted, but I got very lucky with that. So make sure you get that immediately. Um, also with that, what I was saying was in the starter guide or help tab that you can find on the application, there will be help for how to convert into the ACPM grades from your grades um, and also how to convert the units as well. That's important. You just want everything to be exactly how they would want it so that they don't spend more time trying to edit and most likely they will not edit, they will just throw it back at you and you, after waiting for two or three weeks for it, will have to sit and again, switch everything that you did and go through a hassle. So just make sure you do everything up front so you don't have to do that. Um, and like we suggested all our recommendations, you should already have that ready. So all you have to do with Interfolio is just click send, right? Isn't yeah. that how that works? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I already talked about personal statements. Okay, so more things to keep in mind. A lot of these programs are under rolling admissions. So yeah, so rolling admissions is a first come first serve type of basis. So the application uh, goes from August till June. So um, a lot of these schools are gonna be accepting applications throughout that time period. However, uh, with rolling admissions, again, I said it's a first come first serve basis. So if the first 40 people hypothetically applied uh, all in from August till October and they all accepted their invitation to go to that school, even though the application is open till June, then that uh, application cycle is basically closed off to the rest of the remaining students who have turned in their application, but they're not going to be accepted because all these other students before you accepted their invitation. So be aware of that. Um, this is why we highly recommend uh, if you're applying to podiatric school that you should turn in your application right off the bat or really early because you never know. Somebody might take your spot from you and you might be the most amazing student. You might have straight A's, but no matter what, if that person accepts their invitation before you and you were one, if you were one person behind from the cutoff limit for that class, that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Then you would have to reapply for the next uh, cycle. And this is why we're stressing to you guys that you should have everything ready beforehand. That's why Dick Show said, talked about the immediate action have everything ready. Your recommendations have everything ready because again, a lot of people like to uh, slack off on recommendations and wait last minute. When you're, I'm telling you, when you are done with a class or if you have an amazing professor you have a great connection with, immediately ask that recommendation and immediately have that on Interfolio or some other for, written form and make sure you have it organized so you can immediately send it off once you're, turn, once you're doing your application. Right. It, it, can be, it can be a hassle for the people that are writing the letter to. Give them a month in advance. Give exactly. them a month notice yeah. so that they have time to think about what they want to write um, and send you their letter of recommendation as soon as they can. You don't want to wait last minute for that reason too. It's not professional at all. And if they know that you're trying to go into a medical school, and you're waiting last minute, it just doesn't look good on you either. Um, exactly, yeah. Um, also, did you talk about this? Oh yeah, scholarships. So, um, I know for our school that we're, we're going to, uh, they set aside a certain portion of money for scholarships. So again, this comes off, this comes back to the rolling admissions thing. So the people who first applied and first accepted their invitation and if they have uh, good uh, cutoff recommendations to uh, get some of the scholarship money, they'll be provided that scholarship money. However, if you were one of the last people to accept their invitation and they run out of scholarship money, you don't get that scholarship money. Even if you are um, an A plus student, even if you're well qualified for that scholarship money, you have no ability to get any of that money given to you. So be aware of that as well. This is like sort of an incentive to apply early and I highly recommend again to apply early because you can reap all these benefits right off the bat when you apply early. And especially scholarship money because medical school is not it's cheap. Expensive. It's very expensive and it's not just the tuition, it's the cost of living, it's gas, it's, it's food, it's all these things that are gonna compile up and you can possibly look up to ninety to a hundred thousand dollars 
of medical school money that you need for just for a year. So just be aware of that. So anything you can get from a scholarship because you applied early and you were ready and prepared than anyone else will only make you a better applicant and make you reap benefits that are gonna be well worth it for you. Helpful for decades ahead. Yeah. So don't be like me and apply late and find out months later that that's what you lost. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, as far as shadowing podiatrists, so as I keep saying, I applied really late, right? I had also found out about podiatry very late and I got really lucky because I found out about the DPM network. That is very helpful. It's um, I, We were looking at the application and actually they even asked, did you use the DPM network? Um, I'm not sure if they asked specifically who it was that you uh, shadowed through the DPM network, but it's I'm sure it, it also looks a little better that you did go and explore that mm -hmm. option. Uh, but the DPM network are people, are podiatrists who opted to be shadowed. So they're willing to, um, and they know about it, but that doesn't mean you can't ask, like I've said before, you can't ask podiatrists in your city because that's that can just be a lot easier, a lot more accessible. Um, that's what I did, and most podiatrists are more than willing to help. So that's great. Yeah, so to expand on to that, are you, yeah. so expanding on the shadowing of podiatrists, yeah, like Fiction said, don't just depend on the DPM network. Um, try to see your local, uh, try to call up your local podiatrist in the, around your area. Because I know for me, um, my podiatrist was not found on the DPM network. However, I, yeah, so I called him and I reached out to him and he was very excited for me to shadow him. Because a lot of these podiatrists, you have to realize that some of them have really flexible schedules and are, are willing to give, dish out some of their time to help you guys because a lot of them went through the same process of applying where they had to sh shadow podiatrists. So they're going to be understanding and they're going to be understanding of where you're coming from. So don't be afraid to ask these podiatrists because for me, I remember that when I, sh when I was shadowing my podiatrist, he even let me into the OR room in some of the surgeries and that was incredible. And I don't even have that experience right now as a set going into my second year, I haven't been into the OR room. So I had, I had gained so much experience from this one of podiatrist as an undergrad and I never thought I could ever go into an OR, OR room with somebody doing, let's say, a bunion surgery or hammer toe surgery. So it was pretty incredible to see all of that while I was an undergrad student learning about podiatry. Also, when you do call these podiatrists, they're, they're very happy that you reach out to them, but also they're willing to share their connection with other podiatrists around that area. Oh, 100%. <laughs> so for me, when I was done shadowing the one podiatrist uh, during the summer, I had another podiatrist who I shadowed during the fall and it was his colleague's friend so he told me okay now you're done with me you can go to my other friend and shadow him and they were very willing to help me out with all of that and I was able to get even more experience so and go nice. into the surgical room with him as well so it was so it was so incredible that all these podiatrists are willing to help you they're all really interconnected within a local area so yes please go out to try to talk to them because this is again it's a social skill that you have to have and it's important especially in medical school because everything you do in life is all about social network so please do that oh uh, and another thing is so don't think of this as just something you're doing again to check off something else you should also you should also explore especially if you're someone who's watching this and who again hadn't heard of podiatry before it's great to shadow because you'll learn a lot that way about whether this is something you're interested in because I didn't know what to expect with podiatry. I just thought fate check off something else. You should also you should also explore, especially if you're someone who's watching this and who again hadn't heard of podiatry before. It's great to shadow because you'll learn a lot that way about whether this is something you're interested in because I didn't know what to expect with podiatry. I just thought fate. And I don't, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. And when you go and you shadow these podiatrists, you realize I haven't met one who's not passionate about podiatry. Seriously. I mean, look at how his, he's not a podiatrist yet, but how his eyes lit up just talking about the OR and seeing the surgeries. There's so much that we won't know unless we go out there and shadow. 
And so it'll, it'll help you. And obviously, um, I know we're talking about application, but if you're thinking about medicine period, I would shadow different physicians as well who specialize in different things so you could realize what you don't like. That's another thing shadowing is really helpful for. So even in podiatry, it'll help if you realize, oh, I don't know if I really like wound care. Um, or, oh, I don't know if I really like surgery that much. It's, it's really cool. It's fascinating. Go do it. Um, and then extracurriculars. Yeah, so do you want to... Okay, so with this, you don't need to do what every other pre-med has done. I haven't mm -hmm. said this right. No. So it's important to go and explore what you're interested in because even in your application, the admissions board are looking for someone who's well-rounded and your application should all fit in, right? So if you're someone... I mean, it should, it, should, it should tell a story about you. I should be able to read your application and say, okay, I can see this person in my mind, and I like this person, they're really cool, and I can see them as a colleague in the future. That's really something that you should strive for and strive to do. For me, um, my passion in school was mental health. I mean, it still is, but I was very serious about it in school, so that was my focus outside of doing um, work with patients at a clinic, I also had, um, I was a mental health worker, and I still got my patient hours in that way too, but I got experience in something that I really liked, and that was helpful, even when, when you need a break from studying and you know, okay, it's not something I'm forcing myself to do, but it's something I'm actually interested in. That helps, it's not extra fluff that you're adding to your application, it's actually something that you find interesting and they will be able to see that. Trust me when I say that. We stress well-rounded and that's, that's a very important word to really uh, resonate with you right now because well-rounded means doesn't mean you're academically focused. It, yes, academics are important, but there has to be also a social side of you. Um, being a doctor doesn't mean you know 20, everything about medicine. Being a doctor also means you know how to interact with patients, you know how to interact with people, you know how to share your feelings with them. And so a lot of these admissions officers, when they interview you, they want to see a social side of you. So for me in particular, I was an officer for a cooking club. And that was pretty cool because I love cooking. Um, I don't know which person doesn't love cooking. Um, cooking is amazing and I know for me I was helping, I was helping incoming freshmen uh, for, for the college I went to and showing them how to modify their uh, lifestyle and their eating choices and showing them how to cook basic dishes for them to up their game and eat healthier. So that was something I was really passionate about and I had a very strong connection with. And so when I went through the interview process, one of the things they asked me was, how did you like, what did you do, what did you do socially and how did you, what did you like about this cooking club that you wrote on your application? And that's a really cool thing to be asked because it's not a high pressure question and you're able to really uh, push the ball on the conversation and it doesn't have to be stagnant as you're talking to the application or as to the admissions officers. And it's really cool that you can feel comfortable talking about something that you're really passionate about. Yeah. And in addition, don't have six to seven extracurricular activities that you only did for a short duration, like let's a say day, a, or a, few a hours. day, a few hours, a month even. Yeah. Have two to three, even four, just very solid extracurricular activities that you've had uh, years of experience with. You want with. to show commitment. Yeah, commitment is key, and they're gonna ask you about that commitment, and you're gonna, obviously, if you have that very strong commitment with that, you're gonna be very happy to share your experiences with the admissions officers and during that interview process. And so it's, it's really gonna show, and you, it's really important that we're stressing this to you right now because don't just, don't feel like you need to fill out the page and hit a minimum of two pages for you to have uh, a very good looking application. Don't do that, that's, that's, that's a myth. That's a lot, a lot of people might say to you, you have to have a gajillion extracurricular activities to even be considered. I don't know where that came from, but I know in my shoes and my personal experience, that was not the case. And yeah. some people are not able to do a lot of these extracurricular activities as other people are doing, you know? You might have a job, you might be 
uh, a parent, you might be having to take care of your brothers and sisters, maybe you, you're not fortunate enough to even have a car. So there's a lot of things that come about and you need to, a lot of these things are gonna be considered by admissions officers. They're grown people who understand where you're, you've been as long as you can explain yourself and have integrity when you're, sh when you're sharing your application. And that's really important to stress here. Yeah, so it, it's quality over quantity. Yeah, that's basically exactly. it. It's quality over quantity. Um, as, oh. as for achievements, yeah. let the, it, so achievements are different than extracurriculars. Some people have a hard time understanding the difference. So he's going to explain. Yeah, so achievements are awards. Um, so a scholarship is an achievement. If you got a scholarship from the college you went to or you got a scholarship because of your grades, you should obviously state that on your application because those achievements or those rewards that are given to you are unique to you. And this, is, this will separate you again from all the other uh, applicants who are applying to the school that you're interested in because these achievements show some recognition of your skills and your valuable assets. So yeah. make sure you can at least remember or take note of the achievements that you have gained over the years in your lifetime because you should always put those down and be proud of that. It's You're not showing off or anything like that. That is just something showing how you've been recognized and you've been certified to have a reward given to you based off of a particular set of skills you might have. Right, and even if it's a certificate that you won or something, it's you ad admit that you have achieved these wonderful things, even if it is just a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. Doesn't matter how big or small the amount is. And also don't stress if you don't have any achievements. We're not saying you have to have had awards before, but if you have, mention it. And just last thing on these extracurriculars and achievements. When you're explaining your extracurriculars and achievements, don't just say one line when you're explaining, explaining it. Don't say just two lines to explain it. If you're really dead passionate about it and you've had a lifelong or you've had multiple years of this extracurricular activity, please, please elaborate what that extracurricular, uh, extracurricular activity was about and what you did to participate in that. Because you could say something, you could say you were part of this organization, but the admissions officer might not know anything about that uh, organization and you don't want to fall into this trap where you, you assume that they know something about your extracurricular activity. Never assume, always explain yourself and always make sure it's elaborate, that you can elaborate on it. Oh uh, yeah, actually I know we're emphasizing this a lot and you just keep talking about it, but I also have something else to say about this. Um, I've helped a lot of people um, this aspect. For extracurriculars, um, if you are early in your college career, I highly suggest every experience you've ever had, even if it's a day of an experience, even if it's a month, I want you to write that down. Write who the advisor is, the contact information, how many hours you spent doing that activity, and I want you to describe not only what you did, like he was saying, but I want you to also uh, describe what it meant for you, how you grew from the activity, and how that how it will make you a good physician one day. And if and like extra brownie points if you can make it related to podiatry, but you don't have to because we all understand when you're when you're young, you're, a lot of people don't know exactly what their specialty will be. They just know I want to be a doctor. So as long as you are saying a lot more than just, I volunteered at a soup kitchen and I offered some food to individuals. Instead of saying just that, have everything have meaning to it. Express it, not just with words. Um, that's how I would suggest that you write it. Just the same way that you were told to write the personal statement, you have to put that kind of effort in your extracurriculars as well, and in the way you um, write in the description as well on the application. Exactly. And for reapplying, um, you should definitely write that you reapplied if you are reapplying. Um, and when you do reapply, again, make sure that you know what it was that you should have improved on. Or even if you don't, make sure that you do uh, you do improve on something in your application. So that way it's just it's not the same thing that the admissions are looking at.
Because a lot of these admissions officers, when they reject you, they, they don't reject you because they don't like you. Some of them reject you because they see, feel that you just need to improve. Being a doctor is a privilege. And so we, they don't want to just accept somebody who's immature and who is not ready to be going to the medical field or who will not be doing well in these classes because a lot of the classes that you will be taking in medical school are very very hard and yes it's very manageable but for your sake some of these admissions officers are looking out for you so they feel that maybe you're just not ready now and they're probably saving you a ton of money because if you went through this gauntlet of Hard, very hard classes and you feel like it's too too much pressure and you just break under pressure it will it will honestly eat you up and you might be in debt so understand that there's there's two sides to this coin rejection doesn't mean oh you will never be good uh, be a good fit rejection means you can improve something about yourself and you can bounce back from it and so you should be proud of that and so you should be you should be stronger from that. So just be aware of that. Don't don't take it too hard. I've heard a lot of times one of the complaints is just from admissions can be that person was maybe not quite mature yet, or um, maybe this person's transcript hasn't shown us that they can handle um, a lot at once if it's on the lower side. Uh, but that being said, also just know they are understanding if they see that you are an all-rounded well-rounded student or you were when you were in college they'll get that or if they see that you went for me um, I did a special master's program after college and I took other extra courses and I proved myself in that fashion that I could handle a heavy course load there, there are just so many options out there so don't let anything limit you or scare you at the same time if you feel like you're ready, go for it. Um, and also, make sure that you talk to admission. If there's something that you're scared about related to what we just said, if there's a grade that you think is way too low, then before you even take action on that, or scare yourself about it, talk to admissions board for any of the, um, or the admissions organization um, for any of the schools that you're interested in because they will be honest with you um, I had plenty of questions about my extracurriculars, was I lacking in something, or was there a class that you'd want, uh, that they'd want me to take that would maybe bolster my application more. Um, I asked all sorts of questions, whether they were weird or not, I didn't hold back. Yeah, so yes, please call admissions, don't be afraid. If you have an issue, just call them. It, it, it will never hurt you, it will never make you look bad, it will not make your application uh, worse in terms of other people's applications. Just do it. And honestly, it might even look better for you because you're putting your name out there, you're showing that you're concerned, and they'll remember you that when you apply, they'll see that name, oh, this person called me, oh, they were concerned about this, okay, now I can put two to two together, okay, now I see what the thing is. So you should always think of it as a positive thing. None of this, none of the application cycle, there's nothing negative about it. Everything is positive. If you do everything, really, if you just do everything by the book and if you call just to clarify things, everything should go out smoothly for you guys. Oh, and just to add something, I just remembered, um, don't think that this is just it for writing extracurriculars and personal statements, awards, and achievements. You also need to make sure to always check because uh, there are some programs that require you, we, even though podiatry doesn't have secondary applications necessarily, we do have for some programs extra questions that they ask and you don't want to miss that because if you do, then it'll look like you didn't even apply at all to the system. So make sure you go through and check. Do you remember what tab it was? We can show it. Uh, we can show it in the description uh, below or we can um, show it on the screen. Uh, but that is something you want to make sure. So have that ready as well. Um, and that's something you shouldn't, again, you don't want to do this last minute and send it in just with one draft. This is important because it's telling the schools, just like secondary applications, it's telling these schools exactly what your personality is and what they're going to look for before they even meet you. So um, that should be it. Yeah, so if you guys 
have any more questions regarding the application process and if you need some clarification on some of the things we talked about please feel free to reach out to us at the dpm journey at gmail.com we'll put that in the description and please follow us on instagram at the dpm journey um, we're very excited to always uh, always answer you guys' questions to, got, to help you guys out. Again, I know we are lagging on some of these things, but medical school is hard. We're trying our best here, and we just want the best for ourselves and also for you guys. So we're trying to have a good uh, time management with that. And subscribe to our channel. But with that being said, hopefully you guys have a great day. Have good a great luck weekend. On the cycle. Of course, and take care, guys.